Truck 14 calling XOA 85. Come in, please. Over. Go ahead, 14. This is XOA 85. Over. We are ready to remove recloser at location 157 to carry out inspection and maintenance. We've got your hold off, 14. Over and out. The purpose of this film is to underline the standard procedures for carrying out the inspection and maintenance of automatic oil circuit reclosers in the field without interrupting service. A crew of two is normally employed for this work and one man should be delegated to ensure that the proper sequence of operations is followed and that standard hold-off procedures are observed. A standard live line clamp stick is used by each lineman for the removal and installation of bypass jumpers and drop leads. Although the clamp sticks are shorter than two standard lengths of operating stick, they provide more positive control when working aloft. Preparatory to lowering the recloser from the pole, first check that the recloser switches are in the closed position. The two linemen, working as a team, then install the bypass jumpers using the live line clamp sticks. When all phases have been bypassed, open the reclosers. The next step is to isolate the recloser, which is done by the two men working from opposite sides of the pole. By means of the clamp sticks, the drop leads are removed from the line simultaneously. This synchronized movement is important. The drop leads are then secured to a spacing bolt on the recloser cross arm or other convenient point. When all reclosers are isolated, the drop leads may be removed from the reclosers by hand, care being taken that the tails don't contact the live conductors above. When all phases are bypassed and the reclosers isolated from the line, the recloser is ready to be removed from the pole structure. A 10-foot folded clamp stick is used to attach a block hanger to the cross arm. A half-inch rope or a set of rope blocks is used to lower the recloser to the ground. On the ground, recloser inspection and maintenance is carried out according to the following sequence. The counter reading is recorded on the log sheet. Next, carefully check the bushings, the condition of the tank, the head cover and sleet hood, and the counter operating handle, which should be left in the closed position. The head cover clamps are loosened with either a socket or a fixed wrench. Do not use an adjustable wrench. When the clamps are free, the mechanism is swirled in the oil as it is lifted from the tank. This will wash any loose particles of dirt or metal out of the mechanism. The mechanism is then placed upside down in a suitable receptacle for detailed inspection. Examination of the mechanism includes the following points. 
check all parts for damage. Check that the springs are in place. Examine the insulation for any signs of breakdown and make sure that all connections are tight. The operating handle was set in the closed position before removing the mechanism from the tank. So check at this time that the contacts are fully home. By operating the handle, check the operation of the counter and ensure that the contacts are properly aligned for each closing of the switch. Wipe the contacts with a clean, dry rag. Under no circumstances, use emery cloth. Should the contacts be badly burned or fail to close properly, a shop overhaul will be necessary. When the inspection of the mechanism has been completed, the old oil is tipped out of the tank. Should the old oil appear excessively dirty, the tank and the mechanism should be flushed with clean oil. When pouring out the old oil, watch for any parts of the mechanism that may have become detached and fallen to the bottom of the tank. The liner is now removed and the tank clean to remove any carbon or extraneous matter. The liner is also cleaned, and if it is wet, it should be replaced with a new liner. The liner is now reinserted, and the tank filled to the correct level with new oil. Before replacing the mechanism, carefully check the head and, if necessary, install a new gasket. When the head has been tightened down, turn the complete unit upside down to ensure that no oil leaks from the joint. To expel any air from the hydraulic system, operate the handle six to eight times or until the unit locks out. With the operating handle in the closed position, both bushings are tested to ground with a mega. The final check is to test the recloser with a battery connected across the bushings. Three clicks should be heard if the mechanism is functioning correctly. Then a fourth click 
as the lockout feature comes into operation to hold the switch open. Next, check the non-reclose feature. The counter should record each of the four clicks. In other words, the purpose of the counter is to record each operation of the recloser. The setting of the counter is now recorded on the log sheet. And after a final cleaning of the bushings, the unit is ready to be replaced on the pole. Replacing the equipment on the pole is also carried out to a standard sequence. It is raised into position by means of the hand line or blocks. Again, make sure that the recloser is in the open position. Then simultaneously reconnect the drop leads to the conductor. Close the recloser. Then remove the bypass jumpers. It should be remembered that in carrying out this work, the standard hold-off procedure must be followed and the hold-off retained until all work on the pole has been completed.